In this video, we're going to take numerical data from two variables that have missing data, and we're going to do three things. We're going to create a scatter plot, add a trend line, we're going to interpret the coefficients of the regression equation, and then we're going to conduct a t-test to determine whether the regression is significant. A couple things to note before we begin. First of all, if you make a data table and hide missing data, scatter plots will give you what you want. However, the other two methods that we saw in the previous video will not work. The data are hidden, but are still used in those calculations. So this is why we're going to be using a scatter plot. An alternative method would be to create a pivot table like we did a few videos back. That would allow you to also hide the missing data while using those functions. The other thing to note is that you may need a tissue because this is the last in the series of videos that I've made that you will be watching. So we're in the workbook 1920 regression and we are down in the worksheet gimme 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 on the Christmas data that we've done in a previous video. And the question here is how can you maximize the number of gifts that you receive from Santa? Does it depend on the number of children you have? Does it depend on the number of cookies you leave out for Santa? So we're going to perform a hypothesis test at alpha equals 0 0.05 for each relationship. In this video, I'm only going to answer the first question. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to answer the second question. But just to get yourself set up here, let's just make sure we have our two variables. We're going to regress children on gifts, and we're also going to regress cookies on gifts. So I'm going to be dealing just with this column here, going through our hypothesis test, and you will be going through this column here on your own. So let's look down at our data. We have it down here. We have three variables, gifts, children, and cookies. And just to remind you what these variables mean in the code book, they are children is how many children under 10 are there in your household, gifts is how many gifts did Santa leave out at your house, and cookies is how many cookies did you leave out for Santa. So I'm giving you missing data here is 99, negative 1, and 99. So these are the things that we want to exclude from our analysis. Now to make a data table, if you recall, you can either select all of the data all of it, or just click on any one individual cell, making sure that there's white space around your data set. Okay, so we do have that here. You can look down and check, but I'm just going to click on one cell, holding in control, and I'm going to hit T, as in table. And our table does indeed have headers. The headers are gifts, children, and cookies. And I'm going to click OK. Our data table has been constructed, and I'm just going to name this Xmas, like we did in the previous video. So first I'm going to filter out our missing data. And just to note, make sure you're not typing anything to the right or the left of your table. For example, here I've written something absolutely brilliant. Isn't that wonderful? However, this row contains missing data. And you can see what's going to happen to this cell here when we hide that missing data. It's going to be hidden. So if you've written anything over here, any pearls of wisdom, they will be lost. They will no longer be visible. So I'm going to go ahead and hide our missing data. So here I'm hiding negative one, which was our missing data for gifts. And I'm going to look at children, and we can see that there is no missing data for children. So these are the two variables I'm doing right now. When you do cookies, you'll want to hide the missing data for cookies. Moving back up here, we want to know our n. And how do we calculate a count of how many data points we have when we hide missing data? Well, we have to use the aggregate function. So aggregate, and we want to count up the number of cases we have. And I'm going to hide the hidden rows, ignore hidden rows. The data that I'm going to select are from the table Xmas, opening bracket, 
and I'm going to count up the number of people. Now any one of these would work in this particular case. I'm just going to choose children. End bracket and parentheses enter. We have 1815 people. Our alpha is 0 0.05, I'm saying in the question, and we want to calculate our regression equation. How do we do that? Well, we do that using a scatter plot. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly since we saw this in the previous video. I'm just going to go insert, scatter, scatter with markers. Up comes our chart. I'm going to right click and select data and I'm going to add a legend entry. The name is going to be number of gifts received from Santa by number of children in household. Our x values are going to be our number of children enter and our y values delete that is going to be the number of gifts I'll go up to the top here control shift down enter so there we have our data I'm going to click OK scrolling back up to our chart control up so let's go ahead and add axis labels here so that we know exactly what the x-axis is and what the y-axis is so I'm going to go up to click on the chart, go to layout, click on axis titles, horizontal axis, title below axis, and I'm going to type in children. And adding a vertical axis, rotated title, I'm going to type in gifts. So we have the number of children and the number of gifts. And I'm going to delete this, make our chart a little more neat. I'm going to right click on a data point and I'm going to click on add trend line. I'm going to select the bottom two options, display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. And we're going to do a linear regression in this case. Click close. And here is our regression line. I will put this in a more visible place down here so we can actually see what it says. And our regression equation is y hat equals 5.67, I'll round up to the nearest hundredth, minus 0.0054x. I'll include all those digits because it's such a small number. So what is our y-intercept telling us here? Well, this is telling us that people who have no children receive an average of 5.67 gifts from Santa. And that for every additional child you have, Santa will give you 0 0.0054 fewer gifts. It's sad. So we want to know whether or not this regression equation is significant, in particular whether or not this correlation, which is proportional to our slope of negative point zero zero five four is this number sufficiently different from zero that we can say that in the population there is some relationship between the number of children you have and the number of gifts you receive from Santa you can see from our scatter plot up here that the line is pretty horizontal and that our data points don't really seem to have much fluctuation across numbers of children um, if anything it's slightly negative but it seems pretty close to flat Okay, there's no general upward thrust or downward thrust of our data points. This would tend to suggest that there is no relationship. Let's go and check whether this relationship is significant in the population of all people in the US. So our research hypothesis is that the number 
of gifts that you get from Santa depends on how many children there are in your household. And our notation for that is rho is not equal to zero. You can use the notation if you want on the answers worksheet. Um, I'm just typing in p here and not equals for brevity. And our null hypothesis is that the number of gifts that you get from Santa does not depend on how many children there are in your household. And our row, our correlation in the population, would be zero for null hypothesis. Step two is determining our critical value of t. I'm telling you that your degrees of freedom for regression is going to be n minus two. So this is our n right here, minus two, enter. And our critical t, there's two different functions, one for a two-tailed test and another for a one-tailed test. The hypothesis that we've said here does not give a particular direction. It could be more, it could be less. So we're going to go with a two-tailed test. So equals t dot inverse two-tailed. The probability is going to be alpha, and our degrees of freedom is going to be right here. Close parentheses, enter. For step three, our r squared value is on our chart. So let's look at that. That was 6e negative 06. So let's write that into this cell here. 6e negative 6. This is scientific notation. You can see what that means. It's 6 with six decimal points in front of it. That's what 6e negative 6 means. If you want to change that back, you don't like how this looks, you can just go up here. It automatically changed this to scientific. I'll just click here and go on general number. And now it's back to the 6 with six decimal places in front of it. Our r value is just going to be the square root of r close parentheses, enter, and our sample t, we're in a position now to calculate this. Our sample t equals r times the square root of n minus two, which was our degrees of freedom, divided by, following order of operations, we use an opening parentheses. We want to do one minus r squared. One minus r squared close parentheses, close parentheses, enter. So here we have our sample t value, and we're going to make a decision based upon that sample t value. So which one is bigger, our sample t or our critical t? So our sample t is smaller than our critical t, so that means we're going to go with our null hypothesis. So our sample t is not in the critical region, which is out here. And our sample t was very, very small. So it's not a very big difference from our null hypothesis of there being zero correlation. So how do we interpret our results? Well, our null hypothesis was B18. The number of gifts that you get from Santa does not depend on how many children there are in your household. Step six is, if you have a significant relationship, determine the strength of that relationship. So here we do not have a significant relationship. We went with the null hypothesis. Now we can go ahead and calculate it if we like. It's accurate for the sample. It's just a number that reflects sample data. But it's not going to be generalizable to the population. So we already have our R squared. So I'll just put that right here and I'll format that as a percentage and I'll add those digits so you can see where exactly that is. So now there's only four decimal places. Percentage is multiplied by 100. There were six before, now there's four. 
if we wanted to interpret this, we could say that in the sample number of children explains 0.0006% of the variation in the number of gifts that people get from Santa. But again, we would not want to report this because it's very unlikely that there is a relationship between these variables and the population. So since there is no relationship in the population, this is not meaningful to interpret for the population. So finally, what can we do to receive more gifts from Santa? Well, from this, we can't really say whether or not you should have more or fewer children. It seems that Santa doesn't really care how many children you have. He's going to give you the same exact number of gifts. So moving forward, when you go and do the regression between gifts and cookies, you're going to want to hide the missing data for cookies. But what that's going to do is it's going to hide the rows that were valid for the relationship between gifts and children. If you're just doing a regression between two variables, you can just do the regression for those two variables and not worry about this. But for this particular example, what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this number here. And I'm going to right click and click paste as values right in the same spot. Now this is no longer going to change because it is no longer a reference. And similarly, if we want to keep this chart, I can right click on this chart and click Control C to copy it. And I can click over here and then right click and say paste as picture. Again, don't do this if you just have two variables it's important to show your actual chart and how it, have it be dynamically linked to your data in case anything in your data changes. But just for this particular example, I'm going to go ahead and paste this here, and I'll just put it up here on top of this, and both of them will be there. And when you go ahead and hide the missing data, you'll be able to see that this one is no longer referencing data. These formulas will change, these ones will remain static because this is just a picture now, effectively, whereas this is still linked to your data. If you want any guidance for what your answers should look like for the cookies against gifts regression, you can just click on Gimme, Gimme, Gimme Answers. That's all from me. I hope you found these videos useful.